Hello, my name is Matisse Cavoli, the world guys to my channel today. We're going to talk about X Factor number one, written by Bob Layton, fantastic art by Jackson Geese or Guise. I'm not sure how to pronounce that last name. And the really interesting thing about this first issue, yeah, it was like marred with a lot of problems. Prior to this, got the return of Jean Grey, as I mentioned previously. Chris Claremont was really pissed off about the situation. He actually tried to get Dazzler to be the female member of the team. And this led to conflict between Claremont, John Byrne, and Jim Shooter. And it sort of led into this series because because of the, the whole conflict with the prior story of bringing Jean Grey back, Jim Shooter got really heavy-handed with this series and with this creative team and asked for an insane amount of rewrites every time they would deliver the pages to the story. And I guess that led to the, the whole situation that Bob Layton's going to leave this series in issue five or six. So we start off the story. We got Cyclops. He's happily married. He's got a kid. He's up in Alaska. He's cutting wood with his optic blast. But he sort of yearns to be our hero again. And this leads to a little bit of conflict with his wife. Then we cut to the other members of the X-Men of the original lineup, Beast, Iceman, and, Ar and Angel. I was going to say Archangel, not yet. Who were on this really weird lineup of defenders up until this point. But what happens is... Uh, Angel gets wind of the return of Jean Grey. He, he discovers she's alive. He goes flying straight to New York City to talk with her. And one really cool thing about this first issue is that they don't fight against a villain per se. What they're going to do is they're going to rescue this guy who his powers are just totally out of control. And the whole MO of the team, because obviously Jean Grey is going to... She's back. She talks to Archangel, tells him, we've got to be heroes again. Archangel... Brings um, Beast, Iceman, and they call Cyclops to create this team, sort of like Ghostbusters. They're going to simulate that they're going to hunt mutants in the first place. But so people are going to call in. They're going to they have advertisements on TV. They're going to call in, and they're going to simulate they're going to go hunt these mutants. But what they're going to do is they're trying to rescue these mutants. X Factor teams are going to be the mutant hunters, and then we're going to get a team that's going to call call it further down the line when they're using their mutant powers as exterminators they're the ones that actually do the rescuing in the first place because they're they use their powers so i sort of got ahead of myself but when angel finds out that gene gray's alive and she, they talk in the whole nine yards he angel has to call cyclops he got he got he's got to inform of this whole situation and he doesn't take this lightly because he knows he's married and his wife looks exactly like Jean Grey. And there's something weird about that whole situation. And literally on this page, his marriage ends. Like Cyclops finds out Jean Grey's alive. He abandons his, abandons his family. <laughs> like Cyclops, he's always sort of a dick. Like he's a really good leader he, on the field. He's always on his top game. But his personal life has always been sort of a mess. Like he decides to leave his wife. He mopes around the first couple of issues of X Factors talking about his wife and Jean Grey and how much he loves. And he never mentions his son, Nathan, ever. Like up until issue eight, he doesn't even mention. It's like, oh, yeah, my kid. He's a terrible father. And you, uh, you know what? I know a lot of people that are excel as professionals and even um, as political leaders and... As in their personal lives, they're total disasters. So I can really identify people like Cyclops in the first place. So Cyclops, when he sees Jesus Gray, he sort of loses it. And he, he's, he's sort of torn at first. But like he totally decided to abandon his wife right off the bat. So the mutant they have to rescue is actually Rusty Collins. He was like part of the Navy. A friend of his, went to they went to this brothel. And he actually almost burned alive a prostitute. <laughs> and this led to him almost getting lynched and he can't control his powers so um obviously x factor swoop in they try to rescue him things sort of go south because the guy can't control his powers and he's sort of freaking out who the hell are these guys trying to uh, capture him in the first place a part that i found totally uh, priceless is that the guy that puts in the call because they do charge for their services he said hey look we captured that evil mutant and you have to pay $46,000 for our services. So it's sort of funny how they screw over the mutant haters by doing that. 
So this is X Factor number one. Like I was all, all over the place, but it's really, really good. This whole series, at least I really love it. Like we get to see the first time Apocalypse in the series. We get Archangel further down the line. Cameron Hodge, who is the head of of um, their, he's their lawyer and public relations guy. And further down the line, he because of his hatred and envy toward his mutants, going to be a really interesting villain for some reason. Art Angel, I was going to say Art Angel, more and more than, than the third, is always in his one underwear all the time. He He's actually trying to fast one on Cyclops since Cyclops is already married and uh, win over Jean Grey. But that's for other videos. So I hope you guys like this. See you guys next time. Bye.